Now that magic is becoming an increasingly important component of the MCU, we think it's time to analyze how it stacks up to the technology we all know and love. Whether you're time traveling by tapping into the time stone or messing with the quantum realm, the end result is pretty impressive. But does Doctor Strange's connection to the mystic arts really make him more powerful than Tony Stark ever was, or are we underestimating the power of Iron Man? Science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke once said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And that's coming from the guy who co-wrote the screenplay for 2001 A Space Odyssey. In the early days of the MCU, it was all about technology. And it actually seemed as though Marvel was trying really hard to avoid introducing the idea of magic. In Thor The Dark World, they even tried to explain away a lot of Asgardian abilities with the idea that they were just really advanced science that they couldn't quite explain. But let's take a look at some feats we've seen accomplished using two different methods, starting with the totally game-changing concept of time travel. During Doctor Strange, we saw our hero travel through time and ultimately use this power to create an infinite loop designed to frustrate the dreaded Dormammu. The Infinity Stones are arguably magic items, and Doctor Strange needed to utilize the mystic arts to wield the stone effectively. We saw him travel efficiently and effectively, popping into a quick 14 million plus futures during Infinity War. But is that a testament to the magical time stone or Doctor Strange's skills? Because after Tony figured out time travel during Endgame, anybody could use the technology, even characters not exactly known for their intelligence. Time travel! Both methods required special items, whether they were an Infinity Stone or Pym Particles, but Tony's tech had a huge advantage when it came to ease of use. Like magic, space exploration also took some time to be properly introduced into the MCU. We all know Heimdall controls the Bifrost Bridge and has the ability to send people seemingly limitless distances in the blink of an eye. Heimdall makes it look easy because he's just that awesome, but we've seen Doctor Strange struggle to acquire the same skill. To be fair, that was when he was just an apprentice of the mystic arts and not a master of them. But the Guardians of the Galaxy don't need any magic to travel through space. They may not be able to fly around the stars like Captain Marvel, but their ships work just fine to get them where they need to go. Magical methods work a lot faster, but they're limited to the user and the amount of people they can transport. Heimdall could only get Bruce Banner to safety during Infinity War, while a spaceship can rescue a large number of people as long as at least one person knows how to pilot it. Plus, ships might be slower, but they can contain helpful items and function as a way to attack or defend against enemies. The lines between science and magic get really blurry when we touch on the topic of trying to contain dangerous materials. In Doctor Strange, the Eye of Agamotto is made out to be a magical artifact capable of containing the Time Stone. So just, uh, never mind when the Ancient One just handed it over without the Eye back in Endgame, I guess. Is the Eye of Agamotto really any more magical than any other devices meant to contain the Infinity Stones? Are we supposed to believe the Orb and the Tesseract are magical items too, or are those containment devices purely technical? Meanwhile, we've seen technology contain some incredibly powerful things. I mean, the fact that humans were able to contain Loki for any length of time is impressive, even if he did manage to escape. Tony's Iron Man suit allowed him to safely grab onto a nuclear weapon and safely escort it away from our humble planet. At the very least, magic doesn't seem any better than technology at keeping things safe, and frankly, I'm calling into question whether the Eye of Agamotto is even magical. It's easy to get caught up on all the awesome offensive moves in the technology versus magic debate, but let's not forget that healing is an important skill. In fact, before he learned the mystic arts, Doctor Strange was incredibly proud of his ability to heal people using entirely non-magical means. And using the mystic arts to fix up his hands wasn't easy. And while we've seen them used to heal people, we've also seen how easily those spells can be undone. Meanwhile, we've seen incredible restorative tech in the MCU. Tony owed almost his entire superhero career to the power of his arc reactor, and instead of learning how to cast spells, all Bucky Barnes had to do was slap on his Wakandan prosthetic arm to be back in action. Remember when War Machine took a dive during Captain America Civil War? If you forgot, I don't blame you, because once Tony hooked him up with some tech, it was like his debilitating injury never happened. The movie Doctor Strange showed us that magic can sometimes heal wounds modern medicine can't, but every other film showed us those kinds of injuries are few and far between. 
Tony Stark isn't the only hero who would have had a much shorter career without a little bit of science. Technology was one half of how the Incredible Hulk was created. The Hulk couldn't exist without science, and we all know what a powerhouse he can be when he's full of rage. But if we're going with the assumption that the Infinity Stones are magic, then we have to talk about the characters who have their powers based on them. Vision is a split between the magic of the Mind Stone and the hard work of the science bros, so let's leave him out of this. But Wanda Maximoff got her powers from the Mind Stone as well, and she's one of the strongest fighters in the MCU. Another top-tier fighter, Captain Marvel, received her powers from the Space Stone, and most fans would agree that either of these gals could defeat the MCU version of the Hulk. If you're making a superhero with powers, it's clear that a little bit of magic is the ideal method. Getting bit by a radioactive spider is cool and all, but Spider-Man can't punch a spaceship apart. And neither can Captain America, who got his powers from the Super Soldier Serum. As much as we love seeing crazy battle scenes in the MCU, we also have to appreciate that sometimes stealth is the best option. When it comes to this subtle art, Loki is considered to be one of the best, and it's not hard to see why. He can disguise himself as other people, or simply project an image of himself to make it look like he's there when he's really not. It's definitely an impressive skill, especially when you realize that most non-magic users in the MCU rely on wearing a hat and sunglasses to blend in. But the Black Widow doesn't need magic to be a master of stealth and subterfuge. She managed to infiltrate Stark Industries without arousing any suspicion, let alone all the secret missions she's carried out over the course of her career with just her own skills and a few strategic devices. And let's not forget that she's even managed to get the jump on Loki, who's bragged that he's almost impossible to sneak up on. The Asgardians talk about the Nine Realms, one of which is our own humble planet, otherwise known as Midgard. We've seen Asgard, but most of the other realms are more mysterious. However, it seems safe to assume they're much more magical in comparison, since they have more of a history with Asgard. And based on what we've seen, a lot of them are pretty unpleasant. Jotunheim is filled with frost giants, Svartalheim is home to the Dark Elves, and Muspelheim is just, uh, it's on fire. Suddenly traveling to a magical land doesn't seem like that much fun. But the science developed by Hank Pym has allowed people to cross into the quantum realm, and while we have a lot of questions about this space, it seems like there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. And it can't be that hard to survive there since Janet Van Dyne was there for years and emerged just fine after being rescued. Plus, we all want to know more about the quantum realm, while it's safe to say most of us don't even want to watch Thor The Dark World ever again. A lot of these achievements are close calls when it comes to whether technology or magic is more effective, but I have to admit magic wins this one in an absolute landslide. In The Avengers, Loki made mind control look like a snap using his own powers and those of the Mind Stone. He was even able to take over Clint Barton for pretty much the entirety of The Avengers, much to the displeasure of actor Jeremy Renner. Meanwhile, we've seen Tony Stark try to control people using his technology. He couldn't even prevent Peter Parker from removing the training wheels protocol from his suit, or convince him to stop chasing the Vulture. And we all saw what happened when Tony tried to create something to keep all of humanity safe. Despite his brilliant mind and billions of dollars, Tony's best efforts couldn't come close to magical mind control. Having a magical weapon sounds amazing, but in practice, it's not always that ideal. Yes, Thor has an enchanted hammer, and I love watching him swing that bad boy around as much as the next person. But while it can harness the power of lightning and help Thor fly through the air, it has the definite downside of the worthiness requirement. When your daddy can literally ground you and take away your weapon, it's a lot less fun. Plus, as we learned in Thor Ragnarok, magic doesn't necessarily mean indestructible. Doctor Strange has wielded a whip made out of magic, but while it's effective, it doesn't seem superior to more traditional methods of bringing down bad boys. When it comes to technological achievements, <laughs> wow, where to start? What about the fact that Clint Barton managed to strike fear into the hearts of the Yakuza just by using a simple piece of steel? Let alone the incredible army of Iron Man suits Tony Stark has created and occasionally destroyed over the course of his career. While we haven't seen a ton of magic on machine confrontations in the MCU, it definitely seems like science-based items have the advantage. At this point, we're pretty used to seeing Doctor Strange throw around magical energy like it's no big deal. And there's no denying it's an effective tactic. But let's not forget that he uses a sling ring as a way to control this magic, which makes it similar to the fact that heroes like Tony rely on items to pull off similar feats. Tony's suit seems especially capable of withstanding this type of attack. 
he was able to withstand a mighty blast from Mjolnir, and that actually charged him up instead of damaging him. Some of Tony's devices were so dangerous that he agreed to stop making them back in the first Iron Man movie. When it comes to firing at enemies, it actually seems like technology is the superior offensive tactic in this case. Being able to fly is one of those superpowers that we all wish we had, even though we'd probably immediately injure ourselves somehow. We've seen plenty of our heroes take to the skies using the power of science. Even Peter Parker's webbing that allows him to swing through the air was created using technology and his own intelligence. Doctor Strange can fly too, but he relies on a temperamental magic cloak to do so, which makes it less than impressive. The idea of a sentient fashion accessory is a little bit much, even if it does grant the wearer the power of flight. In the comics, Stephen Strange Jr. learned this the hard way in the Ultimate Universe when he lost a battle after being throttled by his own cloak. Learning to control a super suit is one thing, but reining in Strange's cloak is an entirely different one. Given the choice, most of us would probably choose the ease of a super suit over the magic of the Cloak of Levitation. Being friends with a cloak is a whole thing, but sometimes you just need to have a sidekick, and not everybody's lucky enough to have a friendship like that of Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes. Now that's something you can't create in a lab. For a while, Tony Stark had the assistance of the Jarvis AI system, which stood for just a rather very intelligent system. Hey, it's better than BARF! With Jarvis, Tony could run Stark Industries pretty much effortlessly, and as we all know, without Jarvis, we wouldn't have gotten to know Vision. Jarvis is cool and all, but can he compete with a magical flying horse? In the comics, Valkyrie rides a winged horse named Aragorn, which was a gift from the Black Knight. The comic version was a genetically engineered horse, but the MCU version looks pretty magical to me. The choice between a fully integrated AI or a magical horse is a personal one, so I won't pass judgment on this one either way. Except, come on, come on, the horse, it can fly, it's got wings. Heroes spend tons of time taking down villains, but they do so in order to protect. Sometimes they defend innocent civilians, while other times they're tasked with guarding important items. During Avengers Infinity War, we saw Doctor Strange muck up Ebony Maw's attempts to get the Time Stone with a simple yet unbreakable spell. And despite many efforts by people to seize the Time Stone over the years, the Ancient One and Doctor Strange kept it safe for years. Well, before they started handing it out all willy-nilly like candy on Halloween. Meanwhile, our best scientific efforts at protecting things, uh, not the best, to be honest. The Avengers stuck the Space Stone in a suitcase and called it a day, and we all know how well that worked out in Endgame. It took the combined efforts of Kaecilius, Dormammu, and assorted other followers to threaten the Sanctum Sanctorum, while Scott Lang alone managed to breach an Avengers facility during Ant-Man. Sorry science, but magic definitely wins this round. There are just some things magic is capable of that science isn't, at least not yet. During Thor Ragnarok, we saw Doctor Strange casually whip up a beer for Thor. It may have been a minor moment in the movie, but if you think about it, conjuring beer like that simply isn't something non-magic users can do. When Doctor Strange fought Thanos in Infinity War, he managed to turn his attack into a bunch of butterflies. A move which was both beautiful and effective. No matter how much money Tony spends, he can't turn one item into another the way we've seen Doctor Strange do it. He can design items to transform, but it's a pale comparison to what the mystic arts can accomplish. There's really no competition when it comes to declaring this one a victory for magic. Until nanobots just start taking everything apart and rebuilding them in their own image. I'm on to you, nanobots. No matter how great of a hero you are, sometimes you just need a little bit of backup. During the fight against Thanos on Titan, we saw Doctor Strange pull off a maneuver that should be very familiar to fans of Naruto. Doctor Strange summons a bunch of shadow clones, but Thanos manages to eliminate them with ease. Even though Doctor Strange can replicate himself, his copies don't seem to have anywhere near his amount of power. Making a duplicate definitely takes Tony Stark a lot more work. But his replicas are also way more effective. Back in Iron Man 3, he went crazy building up suits that he could control remotely. These suits can do pretty much anything he can, which means they're not as easy to destroy as Doctor Strange's replicas are. We also saw Shuri use technology to transfer Vision's consciousness, which presumably would have worked if she wasn't disrupted by the Black Order. When it comes to making copies, science definitely has a huge advantage. Overall, it seems like science is definitely the handier skill when it comes to making it as a hero in the MCU. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some more spells as we enter Phase 4, but for now, it seems like technology is more than capable of keeping pace with the mystic arts, at least for the most part. 
If you had to choose between getting powers like Doctor Strange or the brains and resources of Iron Man, which would you pick? Let us know if you're on Team Magic or Science when it comes to the MCU in the comments section down below. And before you go, make sure to take advantage of YouTube technology by clicking on that subscribe button and turning on your notifications. We'll see you next time.